Being a good GM requires consistency. Endless preparation. And player appreciation. This is Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. Hello, welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert, the narrator, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Confessions. Now, this episode of Confessions is going to be a little bit of a video response to Ivan Mike over at Ivan Mike 1968, and he had a video called Emergent Characters, Who Are They? And in brief, he was talking about the idea of discovering your character during play as opposed to making decisions about your character's beliefs and personalities before you start the game. And this is fairly close to something that I wanted to discuss at any rate. So I decided to go ahead and kind of do a, a video response. And I'm not going to really talk about my preferences because I really don't have a preference in this area. I think that most of the time when I go into a new game or with a new character, I have a fairly solid idea of who the character is, but sometimes I go into games and I haven't nailed down the character's personality or beliefs, and I do discover those during the game. So I am not really on one side of the argument or the other. So where I'm going to go with this discussion is I wanted to talk about some mechanics that I have developed for another game that I've been working on. I've been kind of working on two different RPGs, one that I have been developing piece I've been developing for many, many years now, and another game, it's uh, more of a science fiction game that I have only been kind of fiddling with for the last couple of years and I've been kind of all of the work that I've been doing on peace I've kind of taken breaks from that and have been working on this other game and essentially where this other game came from is I've always wanted to develop a game where the characters personality beliefs and morality were central to the game and this was kind of in my mind from the early early days of my time in the hobby and it kind of came from the game where I was first exposed to keeping an eye, keeping an eye toward a character's morality or beliefs and that comes from Dungeons and Dragons alignment mechanics and I'm going to talk about my experience with alignment and my perceptions of alignment which may not be rules as written but it was rules as my GM's ran <laughs> so th this was my experience with alignment with alignment I always have felt that alignment has fallen really short and I think you don't have to look any further than where alignment is now in the most recent editions of Dungeons and Dragons that the only reason that alignment still exists is because it is such a um, it's a legacy mechanic essentially they don't want to get rid of it because it's been around almost I guess since day one or very close to day one but it really doesn't do anything for the game anymore and I think that again look no further than the most recent editions of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition D&D or the most recent edition of Pathfinder and alignment really ha 
people don't use it anymore and the companies have kind of said hey yeah man we've kind of abandoned it it's it's only here because it has been in the game so long and even earlier in the hobby my experience with alignment and again this is not rules as written to be honest with you i couldn't tell you what the rules around alignment were back when i started in the hobby or today but my impression has always been that alignment has pretty much been completely useless it was this thing that was supposed to define your character define their personalities define what they believe in and it never really um fulfilled that role because it it seemed to leave so much to gm fiat and when it did come into play it came into play or the way it was used at least by whenever i saw it applied was to kind of pigeonhole players into a particular role you know paladins lawful good characters were to to kind of pigeonhole them into particular actions so alignment was my first exposure to a mechanic that tried to define a character's belief and personality, but it was a mechanic that always fell short to me. Please feel free to address this if you want. Uh, again, I'm not criticizing Dungeons and Dragons or the alignment mechanic. I'm just telling you what my experience in the hobby has been. So in the back, that has always been in the back of my mind that there was mechanics out there to try to define a character's personality and beliefs, and it never really seemed to do the job. So I came up with a system that I wanted the character's personality and beliefs to be central to the game. I came up with what I call virtues and there are six of them and they are paired there are three pairs uh, they're kind of the op the opposites are paired with one another so I have uh, aggression and diplomacy I have honor and deceit and I have leadership and collaboration and this the setting is kind of a hardcore post-apocalyptic post setting where there are tribes and the the setting is very hard and very dangerous and who you are as a person your ability to lead your fellows or to work together with your community to survive and the tribal politics of whether or not uh, you you prefer to solve things with violence or diplomacy and whether or not people can trust your word or really core to the world so i wanted to make a game that really spoke to this and not only do you have those six virtues you have to rate those six virtues depending on how important they are to your character and under these virtues you also have what i call attributes in the game and they kind of are a mixture of what most people would think of as skills in most other games and attributes or characteristics in others. So under the, under for instance, uh, diplomacy, you have attributes or skills that you think you would think of for someone who was a diplomatic individual, such as negotiation and so forth, or under uh, leadership, you have attributes or skills that you would think someone who was good at leading, like inspiration and tactics and knowledge. So essentially, the your character's core beliefs or personality lends to the type of uh, things that the character is good at. For instance, an aggressive person may be good at fighting you know or um, a person who is great at collaboration would be good at doing things in a community that helps the entire community now by no means is your character if you have a character who is an aggressive character by no means 
does the system force you to only be able to deal with things through combat, you can be an aggressive character who still can have some competence in the areas of diplomacy. So there is no there is no pigeonholing, there is no, you know, cookie cutter approach to any of this. It's just an idea to have a very easy to understand system for morality and beliefs and personality that anyone, even if you're not a gamer or you don't role play, you can look at a character sheet and say, oh, uh, this character's honor is higher than, than their deceit. So they're probably more honorable than they are uh, deceitful. And then the game definitely lends itself to someone who is great at being honorable being more persuasive and being trusted more and so forth but by no means can a person who is really honorable uh, ha can, uh, you know be incapable of having a little bit of uh, deceitful abilities like sneaking around or being uh, deceptive so it's it, the system definitely tries to keep away from that and also I think something that is really important for this type of system your character is never forced to play a certain way if you have a character who has a really high value in their leadership it doesn't mean that they always have to be up the front telling everyone tell, telling uh, everyone what to do taking all of you know leading the charges all the time when they are doing those things, especially when those actions are to the detriment of the character, they get bonuses to their experience point rewards. But at no point does the game say, hey, if you have someone who's really aggressive, if they're not punching everybody in the forehead, uh, then you, you know, then, then tell that character, you're not playing your character correctly. No, if a character who has a really high aggression value spends a lot of time running away from combats, uh, deciding to always talk everything out, then they're not playing their character the way that you would think a really aggressive character would play. But the GM is not to argue that you're not playing your character correctly, so change your behavior. It's just that that character won't get a bonus for good role playing because they're not really playing their character the way they said they would. So that's the other thing that makes this system different from the way that I have seen alignment used in the past. And to bring it all around, basically, the reason that this is uh, applicable to what Ivan Mike was talking about is because I've done some play testing and I've done a lot of play testing with this system and probably in my eighth or ninth or tenth play test I had some guys that have never experienced the system before bring up the point of the fact that they would prefer to discover their character in game not to make decisions for their characters beliefs and personalities before the game starts so what happens with this game as I have constructed it is that if you are the type of player who prefers to discover your character that character to emerge during play my system or the way that I set it up can um, can be unsatisfying for that type of player. I never noticed that um, the differences between a player who doesn't mind defining their character before they start playing them and, the char and a player who would like to discover their character doing play, I have never had that issue come to the table as I have for this game that I've been developing. And even during the days when we used alignment, usually guys had no problem with saying, oh, I'm a chaotic neutral. I guess it may be because um, throughout the history of alignment, that has uh, there have always kind of been, it's been a, a wink and a nod and people really didn't pay attention to alignment, even during the days when paladins were expected to always act in a certain manner. I think it probably only fell on the lawful good character classes to act in a certain way but everybody else was allowed free reign so I guess maybe that also is an explanation for why 
I've never had players say, nah, man, I really don't want to choose my alignment because I prefer to decide during the game because people overlooked it and the only characters that really got a hard time um, in the in Dungeons and Dragons even back in the old days were the lawful good characters. So tell me what you think about this. Do you have a preference as to whether or not you prefer to define your character's personality uh, and beliefs and morality before the game starts or would you prefer, for, prefer to learn those things and a system that forces you to make those decisions before you start playing, would you shy away from that system even if your character is not forced to act in those ways, it just earns your character bonus experience points when they do act in the ways that the values and your virtues would dictate, especially when it's detrimental to your character's safety. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that. And uh, uh, thank you very much for listening.